Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. My name is Clarice Rosa Sharif, and I'm the Senior Director of Literary Programs at PEN America. PEN America stands at the intersection of literature and human rights to celebrate and protect free expression in the United States and around the world. We at PEN America believe in the power of a written word. We believe that words can change your world indeed. Our literary programs uh, bring the mission of PEN America to life. With the support of uh, an amazing team, we build a strong and engaged community of writers, readers, and free expression champions year round. A special shout out to Nicole Gervasio, Festival and Public Programs Manager, who works tirelessly on our very special writing programs, including the Dreaming Out Loud workshops. So this week was very special for us and for my team. We launched the 2021 Penn World Voices Festival. And with the theme, Power to the People, the festival celebrates American and international writers whose work reminds us of the true power of storytelling. The festival will be held from May 18 through May 22nd. And to help us kick off the 2021 festival edition, we gather here tonight. Thank you all for joining us. And now welcome to the Worker Writers School 10th anniversary celebration and book release. The timing could not be perfect as we also celebrate today, International Workers Day. On May 1st, people gather, organize, march and speak up for the rights of workers here and abroad. We've seen the pictures, I was looking at the pictures of these celebrations and sometimes protests all over the, over the world today. So tonight is a perfect night to be in community together and to celebrate a 10 year partnership between Pan America and the Worker Writers School. And we are delighted to collaborate with Kenning Editions and Pilsen Community Books to launch the Coronavirus Haiku, the first anthology to come out of our beloved longest running writing program. The Worker Writers School supports writers from one of New York City's vital but lesser heard and lesser represented population, low wage workers. At our monthly writing workshops, taxi drivers, nannies, street vendors, construction workers, uh, home health aides, and many others come together to reimagine their working lives through poetry. The program nurtures new literary voices who inspire social change. They do inspire me. I, I, one of my um, uh, fondest memory at Pan America since I've been working here uh, is to go to these readings where I hear your beautiful poetry and I've heard it all over New York City and I can't wait to be back in person uh, and when we come again uh, and, and celebrate your work and I can be in the audience like many other times before. I would like now to introduce briefly the founder of Worker Writers School, Mark Nowak, before I turn the program over to him and before we hear the beautiful readings. So Mark Nowak is the author of Cold Mountain Elementary, Shut Up, Shut Down and Revenants. He's the re recipient of the Freedom Plow Award for Poetry and Activism and many fellowships. Nowak has led poetry workshops for workers and trade unions in the US, South Africa, the UK, Panama, the Netherlands, and elsewhere. He is currently a professor of English at Manhattan College and the founding director of Worker Writer School. So now let's welcome Mark and our fabulous readers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Clarice, uh, and welcome everyone and happy May Day. Uh, I just wanna say thank you, first of all, to Penn America, um, you know, we started this idea a decade ago, uh, and we really miss getting together in Penn's offices and seeing each other on the first Saturday uh, of the month. Uh, we're here tonight to celebrate this beautiful book that has come out, uh, Coronavirus Haiku, uh, and you'll hear readers um, from the book today read the work that they've been composing over the course of this pandemic year, when we haven't been able to meet in Penn's offices, and we've landed up in workshops like this on Zoom. 
Uh, and we'll hear haiku uh, from people uh, from a number of different organizations and trades uh, around New York City. Um, and so I'm not going to spend too much time. I want to introduce the poets and give them time to read. I'm so excited to hear them uh, read from this brand new book. So the first three uh, readers that we'll hear from, uh, please remember to unmute yourselves when you read, will be Alando McIntyre, Alfreda Small, and Christine Yvette Lewis. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. I am Orlando McIntyre, and I must say that I am beyond elated to be sharing this moment um, with you this evening. Um, thank you for, you know, you could be anywhere else, but you've chosen to take this Saturday evening to spend some time with these great people and these great minds. So thank you for being here. Uh, also, um, I would like to say thank you to PEN America for providing the space to make this moment possible um, without the foresight for this great organization. Um, can't imagine this would be a thing. Uh, super, I am super grateful to Mark Nowak for, um, for just being just a great leader, a great teacher, a great tutor, and just being super patient uh, because I know sometimes it takes some patience to deal with me. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity. And last but not least, thank you to Kenning Editions. Um, Kenning Editions, you make it super, um, uh, you, you've made this possible. I never in a million years would have dreamed that I would even consider myself a published poet, but um, you're, um, you know, it is possible because of you. So I'm super grateful as are uh, my fellow poets and uh, I guess you could say classmates. And um, last and not least, just a bit about myself. I am currently, um, I currently occupy the role of an educator in our capitalistic society. Um, and generally in my community, being an educator, it is seen as like, well, this is a good job, um, or you've made it, or you have arrived. And to some degree, it's like you, it, it is somewhat accurate, but nevertheless, it is still somewhat um, jarring because I am I still find myself within that struggle for liberty, for equality, and also just ensuring that the world that we are leaving behind is one that is palatable and suitable for everyone um, who has to endure and has to journey through this thing called life. Um, so I'm very much part and parcel of the struggle. I often look at it as the slave versus the, um, the house slave versus the field slave type of logic. While it may seem like I am indeed in a good role or a good job, nevertheless, we are still part, we're still slaves in a society. And until each and every one of us is free, we're not, we are not free. Um, so um, as Mark has said, this book was launched with this idea of, um, you know, kind of expressing how we were feeling, how we were navigating the world as the corona pandemic hit. And um, as I'm, you know, working from home, it, it, it struck a little differently for me at times. Um, so the arc of uh, most of my haikus uh, take to, um, tend to take on this questioning, like I'm questioning the government and um, how truthful the government is to us. Um, is the information we're being given actually true? Um, and if you take a step and, you know, kind of revisit history, 1914 during World War I, um, the, the popular sentiment amongst people was not to go to war, not to enter World War I, but our government, the United States government, decided that they were going to actually manipulate people's minds so that we start asking to go to war. And then in World War II, we did the same thing again, and we did use two agencies, the CPI and the Office of War Management. And it always leads me to question, even though there is a virus that is real and um, so many people have lost their lives, I have always taken a step back questioning, is our government being 100% honest with us? And oftentimes people in power think that the folks who aren't in power can't handle the truth. So they oftentimes tend to keep the truth away from us. And um, the first few poems that I will uh, be reading, sharing with you tonight will be getting towards that. So I want to start with this one tight. Um, there is no title, <laughs> uh, but just kind of summarizing how I feel as though I view COVID and this whole situation as a, 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 as a war and um, I could answer questions afterwards. So uh, it goes like this. In COVID war, I sit absolute lawlessness, love with gloves and masks. 
uh, really quickly again in COVID war, I sit absolute lawlessness, love with gloves and mask. And I'm uh, continuing. Uh, the second one I want to share with you is backroom frolicking, a gentle kiss from Rona V or modern war play. Again, a backroom frolicking, a gentle kiss from Rona V or modern war play. And um, these two haikus are kind of getting to this notion um, that this could very much be the way that we are fighting wars in the 21st century. Um, no longer, we have kind of graduated from this point where we are on the battlefield and we see piles of bodies on fields outside of their countries. Like albeit at the height in New York, there were bodies outside of Brookdale Hospital a few blocks away from where I was. So there were still bodies being piled up, but the bodies were already in their home country. So it is slightly different. So what if there is a potential that we could have been occupying a world where, you know, COVID is the new way we go to war um, in, in this century and in this new world. And I was trying to get that um, across in those lines. And, um, you know, as, the, as it hit, we, our world changed. Uh, you know, COVID has definitely made life a complete different experience than how it was a year and change ago. So this one is in dedication to that. Alternative life, gloves, body bags, face masks, crown, corona, king. And um, I'll share a couple more with you. Uh, okay, and then, you know, just kind of this next one that I'm gonna share with you, it, it's, it, it kind of came from just being a frustration, uh, somewhat frustrated of being in the house for, I felt like almost a year um, and life has absolutely changed. Um, this, this, when I penned this one, it was right at like about a month in after the city has been, had been under a lockdown. Um, so we couldn't really go out, we couldn't really travel on the trains. And um, everyone was literally scared and we were told to stay in the house and we were consistently told to stay in the house. So this was one of my, uh, a day when I was just feeling super frustrated. Uh, <laughs> so, so everybody under OSARES because of COVID. Sure, everybody under OSARES because of COVID. And um, that cha, that first, um, that first syllable in the cycle is, is a term that we always use in Patwa, where generally we are, you know, when we're frustrated and there's nothing more, more nothing else we could really say, and we've just had like with wit's hand, uh, we just release that song cha. It don't really have a true meaning behind it, but it, it, it is to kind of evoke that frustration that we are indeed feeling. And um, that's what I was trying to get across here. And um, hit you with two more before I go. Um, this one came after like waking up in our routine, decided like, you know what, in order to truly be free, you gotta free yourself first. And in freeing yourself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, you, self care is super important. So I was on this, like, let me look at what I'm eating, um, what I'm putting inside my body, make sure that my immune system is right to fight this virus so that I could be alive a year later. Um, like, um, um, so, I had made some, you know, I was going through my, you know, detox by drinking, juicing celery every morning and drinking that and then drinking some sister ginger tea for digest digestion. So as I was doing that, this came across to me. Let's talk about freedom while celery juice digests and ginger tea cools. Let's talk about freedom while celery juice digests and ginger tea cools. And the last one is um, this one, a favorite of mine, because I know um, this came across like in the Christmas season where we were like, you know, in the height of like Black Lives Matter when there were a lot of protests, um, you know, the George Floyd situation was happening at the time. It seemed as though it's almost like vertigo at this point. There's always like another Black life being taken, um, like, gratuitously by this police state that we are in um and you know there were like people coming up presidential candidates were talking about like moving forward and equality and all of that stuff and as i sat back and watched the commercials we were talking about black lives mattering but then all the commercials about santa claus he was always white so this came to me 
with all the Black Lives Mattering, Santa is still white in the commercials. Again, with all the Black Lives Mattering, Santa is still white in the commercials. Thank you. My name is Alfreda Small, and I'm going to read um, some of my haiku. The first one is, cashier adds up food. Really tired of people. Tulips blooming outside. People in face masks, gloves hang loose on bony hands. Can't wait to be done. Ferry boat sailing. Crowd rushes to terminal. Subway too nasty. Want to sail away. Warm sun hitting my dry face. Buds bloom near window. Ate taco dinner. Stood on pantry line long time. Hot sun shone, shone on me. Changes to four train. Took forever to get home. Tired as hell now. It's a pleasure to be here with my comrades and writer, fellow writers. Thank you, Mark Nowak. Thank you, Pen America and Kenning edit, editors. Edit, edit. Sorry, sorry. Um, I am Christine Lewis, and I am the Secretary Cultural Outreach Coordinator with Domestic Workers United in New York City. Domestic Workers United won a Bill of Rights in 2010 to give protection um, to nannies, elder caregivers, and housekeepers, workers who are exempted from labor laws. So I read, a, and I believe poetry is um, observation. Poetry is life. So I'll read a couple of my haikus, really short. I'll read them twice. Okay. Rats, human vie for space, an urban sidewalk, cracks in tenement walls. Rats, human vie for space, an urban sidewalk, cracks in tenement walls. Broken woman beg, change, sanitary napkin, a first, Wall Street next. Broken woman beg, change, sanitary napkin, a first, Wall Street next. Dismal season, then I am reminded, seeds sprout from cracks in concrete. Dismal season, then I am reminded, seeds sprout from cracks in concrete. Um, she navigated folks in mask, subway, madam's room for less than 15. She navigate folks in mask, subway, madam rooms for less than 15. 5 a.m. due, missed, robust rats, rake brittle bins, a silent cat sit. 5 a.m. due, missed, robust rats, rake brittle bins, a silent cat sit. Bangladeshi men deliver tacos, bitter days, Upper East Side. Bangladeshi men deliver tacos, bitter days, Upper East Side. Um... Balance, madam, home, dustpan, dust cloth, less than 50 now, American bread. Balance, madam, home, dustpan, dust cloth, less than 50 now, American bread. And my final, um, my final haiku or, or tanker, if you may. North Station Plaza above Frigid Railroad, 7 a.m., housekeepers huddle, Our Lady of Guadalupe amulet hung from middle finger. North Station Plaza, above Frigid Railroad, 7 a.m., housekeepers huddle, Our Lady of Guadalupe amulet hung from middle finger. Thank you. Um, I'm Mandy Medley. I'm one of the worker owners at Pilsen Community Books, which is a worker cooperative and independent bookstore in the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago. And it's such, such an honor to be a part of the launch of this beautiful book tonight and to, to celebrate the anniversary of the Workers Writer School, which has inspired us at the bookstore in countless ways as workers, booksellers, poets, and labor activists. And on today, May Day, when we honor those who have come before us who fought not just for bread, but for roses for us all too, and I'm listening to this wonderful poetry and celebrating this beautiful book, I feel that we do indeed have our roses. So thank you so much for letting us be a part of this tonight. And speaking of roses, I wanna introduce our next poets, 
Davidson, Doreen, and Esteban, if you're up next, if you want to turn on your mics, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Davidson Garrett. I'm a retired New York City yellow taxi driver. I drove for 40 years, and it's a great honor to be in this lovely haiku anthology. Thanks very much to Mark Nowak and to Kenning Editions for this beautiful book. I'd, it'll be an honor for me to share some of my haiku with you tonight. Empty taxi cabs cruising along avenues with bankrupt drivers. No opera now. The virus darkened the Met, but birds sing to me. Broadway shows shut down. Times Square restaurants suffer. Thousands of jobs lost. Time for coffee break. Cabby double parks by store. A cop tickets me. Skyscrapers asleep. Manhattan midnight, eerie. The moon keeps safe watch. Gulf Coast hurricanes, warnings from Dr. Fauci. President Trump golfs. And my final haiku, white supremacist hate to don mask for safety, prefer clan hoodies. Thank you all very much. I'm really happy that we're having this. It's funny because my son just called me and I told him what's happening. And he said, you mean to tell me you actually had a discipline to get yourself published? I said, yeah, I did. But anyway, I'm a family daycare provider and I live in Chelsea, Manhattan. And I'm going to just kind of read some of my daycare high codes. Met a nanny outside. Why are you working? Better money to close. I just can't leave mine unattended. Day one in March, decided not to close. You fool, you fool, all I heard. Folks got no integrity. My kids are very young. COVID didn't make them come undone. Simply didn't like mask wearing. My moms are, were really scared. Travel to work is essential. MTA lost very many. Lots of guns. Lots of gun violence near. Cops told me, don't worry, it's everywhere. Only going to the CDs at night. Everyone is looking for therapy. Everyone talking at me. Class has disappeared. Cops, cops galore. More crime or extreme paranoia. Domestic violence, New York. New York, California. Love you now. So glad I had my windows clean. If I could only enjoy the nights. So, I mean, I'm going to keep my introduction short. I mean, I'm not really um, uh, a type of person to be given like long like introductions. I'm, I'm a, I've been in education and social sciences for the last 20 years. My name is Nelson Chimilio. I go by Esteban in my um, written name. Um, so I'm going to start and end with the same haiku. Um, I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to say it. Uh, these four different concrete muffles is beauty still I watch, still. Face masks cover up space, fear winding down, winding down from the rage. Safe to go jogging again. No more trick or treat. Yearly street walking canceled. Sour taste in my mouth. COVID train riding, my nerves shaking like the rails. Can't wait to leap off. Black hooded white man waiting late night for an Uber. Cots left him alone. These four different concrete muffles, it's beauty. Still I watch, still.
Thank you to uh, all of our initial readers. Um, in addition to today's um, program, the Worker Writer School is also launching a series of projections of the Workers Haiku in Hudson, New York. Uh, this is thanks to the Flowchart Foundation, uh, a foundation that was uh, established uh, around the work of uh, poet John Ashbery, uh, and is really active in the Hudson, New York area in trying to think of some new ways to get creative writing out beyond uh, this great publication and ways we can do it through social media and actually get it out for everyday workers in the street to see. So we have a projection in Hudson, New York, that's also launching tonight, uh, projecting the haiku onto a building in Hudson. Uh, it runs from now until May 16th. Uh, from 8 p.m. or whenever it gets dark until about midnight. Uh, and this is only a small snippet of it that I shot during uh, the setup for it. But thanks to the Flowchart Foundation for supporting our haiku book and projecting it every night in downtown Hudson. And here's the video. And so that's just a snippet of the video. Um, I'm gonna be posting individual haiku uh, over the course of the next uh, couple of weeks uh, onto our Instagram page at the Worker Writer School. So if you wanna see uh, the projection of everyone's poems, uh, do follow us on Instagram and we will, uh, we will have those up over the course of the next week or so. Uh, our next three poets, uh, if you would be so kind as to unmute before you read, would be Kiwi, Curl, and Lorraine. Good evening. How is everyone doing today? It's May Day, and we are here together celebrating writers. My name is Kile Wilonkaranye. I'm a street vendor and now a retired transit worker. I was working in the booth, and so... My haiku reflect my days in the booth as the pandemic hit. No cash in the book, no service from 1 to 5 a.m. Full moon light locally. Use vending machines, no passengers in the subway. Full moon yesterday. Anger provoked at work, gender-based violence, men stop, need to stop. Stress riding the subway, questions without answers, not workers' fault. 23% Blacks in the workplace need to sue for advancement. Enjoy false yellows, amber, and orange. It is not easy. COVID-19 in the subway, isolation and trauma. Two seventy is your magic. You made the rules. Time for pumpkin pie. Thank you. Hi everyone, good afternoon. And thank you all for coming this evening. Thanks to Mark Nowak, Pen America, 
and Keaton for you know giving us this opportunity to to get this book published and to be out there. Um, my name is Kerr Brooks, and I am a code enforcement officer with the city. And um, my poems is just about my experience. And I will read them twice for emphasis. On the street, wind orchestras plays on, vibrant ballerinas spin. On the street, wind orchestras plays on, vibrant ballerinas spins. I take a knee on another's neck, no, in humility to authority. I take a knee on another's neck, no, in humility to authority. Rats, not mouse, bravely strolls across these wooden floors of old. Even cats are on unemployment, I'm told. Rats, not mouse, bravely strolls across these wooden floors of old. Even cats are on unemployment, I'm told. Eyes on election, different numbers rising. Coronavirus, 116,707 new. Eyes on election, different numbers rising. Coronavirus, 116,707 new. Over the fence, once filled with childish laughter, overgrown grass sways. Over the fence, once filled with childish laughter, overgrown grass sways. And my last one for today is today's new normal, looking towards Thanksgiving, Zoom family dinner. Today's new normal, looking towards Thanksgiving, Zoom family dinner. Thank you. I am Lorraine Garnett. I am a nanny and um, a member of the Workers Writers School, and I am so excited. I am beyond excited. I'm elated. I'm jumping. I'm doing cartwheel. I mean, all of us. I got a, a, a email, a letter from the publisher. I have a publisher. We have a publisher. Hi, Patrick. I have a publisher, and my publisher name is Patrick. Patrick, I'm sorry, I don't know the last name, but I have a publisher and I'm excited and I'm sure we all are excited. Thank you, Mark Noak, the founder, director of the Workers' Writers Group. Thank you, fellow poets. Thank you to Kennington Edition and thank you to um, Pilsen Community Books for hosting this. Thank you, Pen America. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, everyone. I am so excited. So let me start by reading um, the Icos. Hi, everyone. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> okay. There's siren. I'm by the window and there's a fire truck going by. Just remind me of all that, that humanist um, time that we had. Um, okay, here we go. Missed first day of spring, positive or negative, cherry blossom looms. Missed first day of spring, positive or negative, cherry blossom looms. Lash to the forehead, open processing meat plant, start cotton picking. Saved by the haiku. Afraid, museum bedroom. What if bones are found? Saved by the haiku. Afraid, 
museum bedroom. What if bones are found? Terrorizing streets, white bodies on black bodies, bloody, bloody moon. Terrorizing streets, white bodies on black bodies, bloody, bloody moon. Sweet banana bread, choco, knee, rope, bullets, lies. Where is the sugar? I'll do that one more time. Sweet banana bread, choco, knee, rope, bullets, lies. Where is the sugar? Listening to dogs bark, sirens howling, fireflies. The dog walker died. Listening to dogs bark, sirens howling, fireflies. The dog walker died. Murder on asphalt, Minnesota crutch, cockroach. Blood morph words, mama. Murder on asphalt, Minnesota crush cockroach, blood morph words, mama. And final two, hospital rooms, shrines, doctors, nurse wearing white, final words, FaceTime. Hospital rooms, shrines, doctors, nurse wearing white, final words. FaceTime. And, you know, this last one, based on everything that's going on, we just feel that, I'll just read, disposable cups, paper plate, evil hearts kill, black and white rainbow, disposable cups, paper plate, evil hearts kill, black and white rainbow. Thank you much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. So, uh, perfect. I'm gonna just say a few words. Uh, we were gonna have uh, our publisher, uh, Patrick Durgin from Kenning Edition speak, uh, but he's feeling a little bit under the weather. So first of all, uh, we just wanna uh, wish him well. Um, you know, and I, I think just maybe express how much it means to all of us uh, to have this book and for this book to come out. Um, I, I looked it up earlier today um, that when I had uh, emailed Patrick back in the September about this book idea, you know, you always like kind of get this idea and you put it together and you email it off to someone and you cross your fingers. And I looked and Patrick responded in one hour and 10 minutes, 70 minutes. Yes, let's do it. I've been following the workers haiku on social media. We can, we can do this book, we can have it out. And so just really in the matter of, you know, six months or something, we pulled all these poems together and edited them and have them out on this tremendous press. I encourage people to uh, go to kenningeditions.com, uh, get a copy of this book, but look at and get copies of so many other great books uh, they've published. Uh, Audrey Lord, Kevin Killian, uh, a brand new uh, collection of translations of Rimbaud by Brian Kim Steffens. Uh, you know, I could keep talking for a long time here, but, but do go out, support uh, the incredible haiku uh, by the workers and other books by Kenning Editions. We are so, so, so proud to have our, our book uh, on this press. And so the last four poets we'll hear from today, uh, and if you could take your uh, mic off before you, turn your mute off before you speak, are Nympha, hi Nympha, Paloma, Seth, and Tom. Nympha, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mark, for having me. Thanks for being a good teacher and my inspiration. And I want to thank Kristen Lewis and Lisette Palencia for bringing me to Pan America under you. And then I want to thank our publisher, Kenny Editions and Patrick Durgan, and to all my co-poets, here I go. Boiling water at 6 a.m. I realized that 
my, my bird clock is dead. Today, Central Park playground gates, padlock, empty, strings raised in the breeze. Crowded hospitals with body bags in freezer trucks disposed in shallow graves. Street sweeper cleans on Monday, honking boldly at park carts. Stubborn pox don't care. Open kitchen lights, so a, a bag, swat, the fly got away. First time I saw a, a homeless man smile at me in a while. Can I, can I offer this one for the dead member of Damayan, Mark? This is in memory, in loving memory of Arlene. When COVID-19 took a mother away, her kid waits for her return. No way to explain, no more hugs, and no more kisses. Now just asses. Thank you guys for listening. I'm from the Mayan Migrant Workers Association. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Paloma. Um, I'm a former retail worker. Um, and during COVID, I was un unemployed. Um, and so this is a lot of my observation as an unemployed worker during COVID. Um, okay. um, and I'll read them twice for emphasis. Um, Okay, key, wallet, mask. Stay away, too close, hold that train. Shit, I forgot the milk. Okay, key, wallet, mask. Stay away, too close, hold that train. Shit, I forgot the milk. A straight road ahead to the ant, hills and valleys. One step forward counts. A straight road ahead to the ant, hills and valleys. One step forward counts. The cashier looks numb. Scanning items like frozen goods. Hot days beg for you. The cashier looks numb. Ca scanning items like frozen goods. Hot days beg for you. Sore, buzzing, hot. Not enough ideas see the light. Blank, silent, stiff. Sore, buzzing, hot. Not enough ideas see the light. Blank, silent, stiff. Look, homemade cookies. Check for more, November score, not enough, the line stops. Look, homemade cookies, check for more, November score, not enough, the line stops. Inner city woes lead to the woods for fresh air. Lockdown loves panic. Inner city woes lead to the woods for fresh air. Lockdown loves panic. Thank you. Great to be with all you workers on May Day. And um, thank you so much to Pen America for having us, to Mark and to uh, all my beautiful fellow workers reading. It's a, a pleasure to read with you. I've been uh, driving a cab for um, the better part of 37 years now. Um, it's been tough the last uh, you know 15 months with uh, the coronavirus, but uh, we press on and we write. So I'll read about uh, uh, six uh, haikus. The Krabby Cabby, now an essential worker. May God bless us all. 250 an hour, Corona Cabby wages. April 15th looms. My wife makes our bed, feel so warm and smell so good. Leave at 4 a.m.? Turmeric, turmeric water fuels Cabby's marathon shift. Is this all there is? A cabbie for decades. Helicopter hovers, deafening on dark Broadway. Greenwich Village tears. Half filled apartments. Our Washington Place neighbor is dead, but not gone. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
Glad to be here tonight. I'd like to thank the publisher, Kennington. I'd like to thank my worker, writers, co colleagues. And of course, I'd like to thank, last but least, Mark Nowak for all making this book possible. Tonight, I'm going to read some excerpts from the coronavirus, which I am a survivor of and all the events that happened last year during 2020. My first haiku is, I am a corona survivor. It is great to be alive. This is not a hoax. My second haiku is, corona sickness strikes me not getting the normal shower. Aroma can't get worse. My third haiku, afraid to go out, cannot let anyone know me. Please hide me. My next haiku, Corona still lingers. Most businesses remain closed. Ghostly Bronx Town Mall. My next haiku, eating less meat, buying more vegetarian and fruits, post-corona healthy life. And my last haiku, yay, the bully is gone. May I please get an amen? It's fumigation time. Thank you all. Thank you, Tom and everyone. Um, if we could get everyone uh, on gallery, if that's possible, uh, just for the next minute. And we're gonna have a, um, a Q and A. So please, everyone who's watching in, uh, feel free to put questions in the chat. Uh, but uh, a few of us know that it's Tom's birthday today. Uh, and so, uh, since we can't be together, I baked him a cake. Uh, and so, if everyone could take their mics off and just give happy, birthday happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tom. Thank you. 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 Thank and now I'm here to talk, to tell the tale, huh? I'm six zero, six zero. Wow. Uh, six zero. And Tom, hence the six candles on your cake. So you should now <laughs> thanks, thanks, come Mark. back on the screen and blow it out on three. One, two. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's wonderful, Mark. Um, that's actually, I feel like we're us watching and me who I, I'm at PEN America, but I'm not there on Saturday. So I miss the fun, I have to say. But I think we all got a taste of what it must be like to have all of you in one room, um, just um, supporting each other, uh, celebrating each other. Uh, and also working, working really hard mm -hmm. together. And the we only got, I think, just a little taste of the amazing uh, poetry that you are creating individually and together. And so we wanted to have a, a, a Q and A session. And if anybody has a questions, they can put it on the chat or put it in the Q and A uh, uh, function. Um, and in the meantime, I wanted to just make sure that I also do this one time, which is to show the book and to encourage everybody to get their own copy and to also gift it to anybody you know. I think that uh, 
this would be a wonderful gift indeed. Um, I had a, so we have a few, I have a question that I can start with. Um, and I wanted to ask actually Lorraine a question, uh, if she doesn't mind. Uh, and my question is, I know that you write uh, almost daily uh, haikus and uh, you probably have hundreds of haiku by now. And so I wanted to know what is, um, why is writing them so important to you? Um, it's, it's, well, we, you know, we started with the haiku at um, like pretty much a few months before the pandemic hit. And then right when it hit, you know, Mark encouraged us to really continue and send our haiku to him. And it, it was a, a way of, um, it was a really humanist time. We, we were just, um, as a matter, I was afraid. I was really afraid. Yeah. And um, writing was a form of um, relieving that, um, that tension, that fear. So um, it, it was just a, a way of um, relieving the sorrow and the pain that we all were feeling. I mean, I would be in my living room or the bedroom and it's just a constant, constant sound of the siren, morning, noon and night. You know, it, 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 the siren was like a lullaby. <laughs> you know, I'm an adult, but it was like a lullaby. It's putting me to bed and it's waking me up in the morning. It, 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 it was just a really sad time. Thank you. Thank you for answering this question, Lorraine. And if, if anybody, I'm not sure I can, Mark, if you see anybody who would like to add to this, um, you can call them as well. Um, let me just check the, uh, okay, there's actually a question in the chat for Seth. When are you and Mike coming out with another CD, The Bards of Empty Streets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, um, I think soon, you know, um, uh, July 1st, um, uh, today, the, the New York City uh, government said we'll be 100%. So I will venture out of the yellow taxi and uh, I'm going to get around maybe even out to uh, Nassau County, uh, still part of Long Island, although I generally stay in Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, so uh, we might be coming out in July, I would say. Be well, fun. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And I Thank think you. we're all looking forward to uh, coming out and being out there in the world, in the real world. Um, another question from Lisa uh, about, and maybe Mark, if you want to start us off and then see if anybody else can, can add to it. But um, I'll just read Lisa's question. Walker Writer School is a true community of love pedag pedagogy. Can you tell uh, K-12 teachers what a worker writer school, um, why a worker writer school is important for young people? Yeah, um, I think that, you know, one of the things that we're taught in school is that there's a, a group of writers who matter and a lot of writers who don't. Uh, and I think that the work we've been doing and this new book and the work that a, a lot of other groups are doing uh, is kind of pushing against that a little bit, right? Like trying to, to turn uh, us from thinking about a kind of like, here are the top poets and here is everybody else. And, and we're trying to kind of expand it horizontally, you know, to, to show um, why this work is important to the world. And so we're just super helpful for, uh, for Kenning editions, um, like putting us on a, in a place where we're surrounded by other published poets from, as I mentioned before, Audre Lorde and new translations of uh, Rimbaud. And, and we're part of that continuum of work as, as people have heard today. Wonderful, thank you. And I'll just, um... Maybe I'll ask a last question where uh, 
maybe a few people can chime in and I, I can, uh, I, I grew up in a, in a family of teachers and I'm, I'm very happy when I get to call on people. So I'm happy to just call on you and ask if you want to contribute. But I wanted to pick up on something that Lorraine said where she said she, she got a, a publisher, a letter from a publisher and, and she talked about that experience of having that letter and being, you know, knowing that you publish and Mark just uh, told us and reminded us of the other beautiful books that uh, Canning Editions have published. So I wanted to know, now that we have this anthology and that you are published, I wanted to know how you are approaching your writing, if it's changing anything for you, how, what are you looking for for the next, you know, cycle and session of classes with Mark? And uh, if you, I have a volunteer, you can raise your hand and or just unmute yourself and 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 talk. I would love to hear from you. I could say something quickly. Yes. Um, uh, the thing that I love about the Worker Writers School is that Mark has introduced us to global poetry, not just poetry from the United States. We read South American poets. We read Cuban poets. We read Eastern European poets. We've read Palestinian poets. And so we're learning new forms and knowing that the, the world is much larger than just um, one borough that we all live in or something. And that's been a very, very helpful for me to learn the forms, the haiku, the tanka, and different forms that we learn. It's been really, um, a very enriching experience for all of us. Thank you, Davidson. That's wonderful. Yes, please, Christine, go ahead. Could I say community, you, you know, and um, taking the writers, the invisible, the invisible workers who we don't hear from, the essential workers, the workers who make this economy go, the workers on the wheel or the cog, so to speak. Um, moving to the forefront, writing, being able to tell their stories, being able to speak truth to power and, mm -hmm. and, and being in a, a community surrounded with folks who struggle are the same, whether it's the, the, the nannies, whether it's the, 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 the mm -hmm. retail worker, whether it's the, the, whether it's the taxi driver alliance, we all have that one thing in common. And also learning the poetic forms. You know, writing is a catharsis. When you really want to give your employer the middle finger, <laughs> the beautiful thing, you know, those of us who have been exploited, really, mm -hmm. and you really want to give them the middle finger, I think the pen becomes your friend. The mm -hmm. worker writers sitting, breaking bread, if you may, writing at a table and writing your truth to power is so liberating. Hello. Hello. It's so <laughs> liberating. And somebody like Mark, who is non-judgmental, who allows us to flow, you know, before we write, we're able to lay bare our souls, you know, talk about the things that are happening in community. Then coronavirus hits. What do we do with that? You know, we've known loss, we've known joy, we've known sorrow, you know, from, from and, and just putting, again, your pen is your friend, just writing these things down and being able to perform like right now or the pen literary um, mm -hmm. um, world festival. Yeah. That's big, big. Hello. Thank you. Christine. Yes. The pen is mightier than the sword. Hello, you know that, okay, your pen, hello, your pen is your friend. Ain't nobody tell your story like you tell your story. Hello, you okay, you okay. i like to echo what Christine said. Um, I'm sorry, Christine, are you complete? No, no, I'm, I'm done, thank you. Um, you know, it, 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 I never expected, you know, anything more than just a group of writers just coming in and just sharing, you know, their 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 words and their thoughts. Um, it, was, it was almost like a, um, I don't want to say an AA meeting or anything like that, but it was like, it was an opportunity to actually um, understand your own personal skills and talents um, in terms of how you um, translate or transfer your thoughts into paper, you know? Um, you know, sometimes you get emotional uh, based on what you're writing about. Um, sometimes you, you know, you have an aha moment when you wrote it. And that's one of the things that I really think, um, you know, Mark and, and the Workers Writers um, Group about was just setting that platform so that that way you can explore certain aspects of, of people around you and also yourself. And could I just add before we go, um, 
Yes. Um, it's not a it's not a moment. This thing that Mark has given birth to is not a moment. It's a movement. I needed to say that. It's not a moment. You know, moments are fleeting. This yeah. is a movement. Hello, solidarity. Thank you, yes. Mark Nowak and Pen American World Voices and Kenning Edition. Thanks for believing in us. Thank you. That's, that's a good point. And I think that it's true. It's a great reminder that this program has been in existence for 10 years and the longevity, uh, you know, says a lot, you know, that I'm, I'm, you know, I think that we can all, we know it's, it's there because it's needed, but also the impact uh, is, is tremendous. One final question before maybe we go, but maybe is on the same line. Um, we have a person in the chat that is saying, um, I've been following Worker Writer School for years and I'm a bit surprised that there are not more of, of these schools or maybe there, um, or are there. Have you thought about spreading this model of a worker-led writing project to other parts of the country or the world? Mark, would you, would you uh, mind taking this one? Yeah, I mean, uh, A, we would love to. Um, B, we, uh, there is a group in the UK right now that is uh, working on a similar model, and we all uh, in the anthology are going to do a UK launch next week, Saturday. Uh, and so that is for people in, you know, across the country, really, London and elsewhere, though, uh, to kind of see how the model's working. They've been coming to visit our workshops. Uh, so we are working on that model and kind of expanding it. Uh, and if there are other people interested, uh, you know, we uh, are, are really open to talking. And whenever I talk to people, I always say uh, two kind of simple things that define us that I think is a little different from your ordinary workshop. Uh, one of the things that's really important to us, you know, as a couple of people have said, is this idea of duration. Like we're not a poetry workshop that pops up at a library for six weeks and then is over with, you know, that, that, um, that isn't the model that we prefer. Like we meet once a month forever, as far as I'm concerned, it's always <laughs> in the calendar. Uh, and the, the second thing is that we always have a uh, organizers from different unions and worker centers who are part of the group. Because I think that in a typical poetry workshop, you'll often, you know, someone will write something that's really hard about their life or about their job. And in a regular workshop, the response is usually just, you know, oh, that's terrible. And you need to fix that word in the second stanza. And we're not like that, right? Like if someone is having difficulty in the job, I can talk to Christine, I can reach out to Keely, I can reach out to other people who are associated with worker centers and say, you know, this, this thing is happening and, and how do we go about and, and make this right, right? And so that's something that those two things, the duration and the connection to the worker centers is incredibly important for what we do. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, and so I, I feel, unfortunately, I think that so many other people also in the chat have said the same. It was such a beautiful evening of words. Um, I have to say personally, I loved um, rediscovering and re meeting you and your personalities through your readings. I think each of you brought so much to uh, reading and performing your poetry for us tonight. And I thank you, I'm grateful. Uh, I feel like it kind of filled a little space that I had uh, today for, you know, for my spirit. Um, so thank you for, again, creating this moment of community and this beautiful, beautiful space for sharing. Um, I want to um, thank the audience, anybody who tuned in tonight. Thank you. You can support the program. I would say first and foremost, support the writers, support the Worker Writer School by buying coronavirus haiku. Uh, thank you um, to the Kenning Editions, to the Person Book uh, community. Um, 
Uh, yes, it's such a beautiful screen that I have in front of me now with these books. Um, thank you um, for our partners tonight. It was very special to pull together and, and be able to uh, schedule this reading tonight. And I feel it's also the perfect way to kick off our 2021 uh, World Voices Festival edition. I hope that I'll see many of you uh, in a few weeks um, during the festival events. If you look at the lineup, up, you go to Pen.org, you'll be able to see the events and uh, please be in touch with Mark and our team. We'd love to have you as, at as many events as possible. Um, so let us know. And then finally, I really, really look forward to welcoming you, you back in our space in New York uh, for a workshop as soon as it is possible and safe for everyone. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. If you have a last few words, I'm happy to have you close us out. Thank you. Um. You know, Clarice, I think what you said is perfect. And, and if you can support the press, buy the book, gift it to friends. Thank you all for attending. Um, we can't wait to see you again. Great, great, wonderful. Congratulations, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Happy May Day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Mark, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Bye. 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 Thank you. Take care, Christine. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Happy birthday. Bye, Serena.